Hey guys, and welcome back to Johnny B's Garage. I'm John, and we've got Holden here with us. He likes to hang out in the garage. He's our new nine-month-old puppy. He's a little mischievous, but uh, he always behaves himself in the garage. Anyway, today's gonna be a little bit different. Most of what we're gonna do on this channel will be automotive-related content, and basically just cool projects and stuff that we've got going on in the garage. But I'd like to kind of show you the garage today, tell you a little bit about it, um, how I came to build my ultimate man cave, and where all the fixtures and finishes came from and just basically show you a little bit of the whole thing. So I'm going to spin the camera around and we'll talk about it a little bit. So I think what I'm going to do is kind of start at the top and work my way down. Um, whenever I moved in here, we talked about it a little bit on the last video, but whenever I purchased the house, this was an empty space. It basically just had a concrete floor and, um, all pegboard on the walls. There was insulation behind the pegboard, but the ceiling was not insulated. And a couple old wooden garage cabinets on that back wall with a wooden top that's currently there. And uh, no HVAC. And it was the middle of winter whenever we moved in here, so it was blisteringly cold. And um, there was also high output fluorescent lights hanging from chains. They made a lot of noise, they buzzed a lot. And uh, I mean, super excited to have the space, but it was time to kind of make it my own. So being a contractor, I started bringing materials home little by little. I started doing it on a budget. Each time I had an extra part, extra Romex wiring, whatever it was, uh, came out here, spent a few hours working on it. And uh, I would say it took uh, maybe a year and a half to completely kind of get the thing to the point place where I was happy with it. But, um, Kind of started off with this spray foam so i had to get insulation in here so that it would be livable somewhat warm and so the spray foam was literally one of the only things that i didn't do myself um, i called i live in indiana but i called indiana spray foam and had them come out and spray everything these guys um, by the time i had this done it was the middle of summer i want to say it was 97 degrees up here it was probably 120 or 130 and they all had these tyvac suits on they're up there absolutely sweating to death doing this stuff all day long definitely not something i would want to do but uh nonetheless i'd say you can kind of heat this place with a candle almost now it really holds heat and air conditioning well um so we got all that done took all the fluorescent lighting down uh, these can lights are actually really inexpensive you can buy them in multi-packs but kind of left it all exposed and open that's the industrial look that i was going for and then installed what's called an led retrofit head in each of these which again are rather inexpensive and you basically install all those things and it cuts the electric bill like basically costs nothing to leave these lights on. So we've got two banks of light switches. We've got one that basically is everything for the garage side or the garage bays. And then we've got another switch here for the high bay lights on the lounge side. So I can kill those and kind of have a little bit of a cooler mood on the lounge side and still have the garage lit so a little bit of the best of both worlds and obviously we've got some other lighting here with the shepherd hook lights the red and the silver and uh like i'm going to tell you a lot of this stuff um either i paid very little or none for it uh, just shopping around marketplace uh the projector screen i think was 80 bucks it's motorized i found that on marketplace the 1080p projector here that i routed i think i got that for maybe a hundred bucks on marketplace. It's not the best of the best, but it does what I want it to. And the resolution's still great. Uh, the shepherd hook lights, good friend of mine. We put this in his commercial building. He bought four of them because he wanted to mix match them. He wanted a black hood and a black base with a red shepherd hook. So we bought two black lights and two red lights. We put them together and we made them two tone. And when there was two mismatched lights left over, there was nothing he could do with them. Couldn't return them. So I didn't know what I was going to do with them initially, but I brought them home and it kind of worked out. So put those together, wired those up. Um, then we've got some really cool Martin moving headlights up here. Um, again, I kind of looked and looked eBay. I think I bought two on marketplace and two on eBay. They're older. So, um, basically these are called gobos. They move shapes and lights around the room. We've had a couple, birthday party, new year parties, and different things out here. And it's a really cool place for everybody to hang out. So we've got some decent audio out here with a couple JBL sound bars. There's one up here, 
There's one up there with a subwoofer in the center and the audio's nice and these are motion activated or sound activated rather with the motion. And um, so it, it really kind of makes the atmosphere cool when we're having people over, having like a get together or whatever. And then um, we've got this awesome chandelier. This thing is all welded, TIG welded, washers and nuts. It was made in New Zealand by some metal artist. And uh, the people lived in New Zealand and they brought two of these back um, and put them in a restaurant that they had here in Broad Ripple, Indiana. The restaurant at some point closed and they listed these on Marketplace for sale. I forget, I think they had, they had them on there for like 600 a piece, which was a deal because the guy told me, I think they paid something like 1800 a piece to have them made. And I couldn't pass them up. I think I offered them three to come take both of them down so that they would have both of them removed. They're extremely heavy and then have one for myself. Kind of wish I would have got them both now because it's such a unique piece, but one fills the space just fine. Anyway, moving on, um, kind of moving our way from the top to the bottom. I've got this really neat brick wall here. And uh, again, I found somebody getting rid of a bunch of brick on Marketplace and basically took my tile saw and sliced each brick like a veneer, laid each one. I think I took maybe, kind of took my time on this, maybe took a week, you know, laying a few each evening. Uh, it was before I had the HVAC in here, so it was really cold, so I kind of took my time and uh, laid them, mortared them, and uh, kind of a cool feature wall. When we bought this house, we bought it from the people that originally built it, and haven't been here really long, I would say about four years now, but one of the really cool things that I really appreciated was that I got the blueprints with the house from when they built it for the house, for the landscaping, and for the barn out here. So it was kind of a no brainer for me to display the prints. I got a piece of plate glass made, did some LED, sheared a little piece of um, steel here, perforated steel to kind of hold it all in place and display the blueprints above a hand-built coffee bar. Again, leftover parts. I brought two by fours home, lag bolted them all together. They're on standoffs off the wall. So they're actually kind of hover off the wall and that makes the whole thing kind of flimsy. So kind of following with the theme of the industrial look, I uh, went to Harbor Freight and got some galvanized wire clips and turnbuckles to tension them and eye bolts here. And you know, once all this stuff is tensioned up, it is super, super sturdy and has a really cool look. So the drywall, uh, obviously you can see everything's finished out here. Uh, we do a lot of drywall work. We do all types of interior remodeling, exterior remodeling as well. And there's always leftover drywall. So for quite some time, I would bring home whatever drywall I had left over, continue to hang it around the barn. And uh, at some point I got really close to the end. I think I had one wall left and I just went and bought the rest of whatever green board that I needed to finish it off. And um, one of the other things that really kind of concerned me out here was I really wanted kind of a unique um, older look. I didn't, I really like the garages where everything's gray and red gray, red, and black, but you see a lot of that. And I wanted something a little bit different. I wanted something unique. So on the bottom here, we have two by six and it's fully pressure treated. So I can hose a car off, uh, snow, ice melt, whatever comes off my truck. It gets the floor wet. If a little bit gets up against the baseboards, it's never gonna rot it. It's not a problem. And that basically on top of that, we have what's called T111. And this is kind of a wooden, pine exterior siding for homes and uh but it's all been stained and it has each groove milled in it it comes in four by eight sheets and uh, it just really has kind of a neat aesthetic and then again something that's never going to rot um, and above that we kind of needed something to cap it off we can't have these grooves next to drywall that would have looked bad this is a one by four just a pine one by four we kind of capped everything off and then we've got drywall above that so kind of finished everything off and um, obviously with what I do for a living, I've got spare tools and things like that. I've got a shed that I keep some stuff in too, but you got to have somewhere to put that stuff. So I've got that. And then we've got the Yamaha Stratoliner. This probably won't be here too much longer. I love this bike. I swore I would never sell it. I got it from a fantastic friend of mine and he had it for many years and I've had it for many years. I've done a lot of custom options to it, but after buying the R8, just don't have the time to ride it. And if I did, I'd probably rather be in that. So I can't let it sit forever. 
it uh, it's not going to do any good to have flat spotted tires and stale fuel so I think it's going to be on to the next person to enjoy it and uh, I think that money needs to go towards some other stuff anyway so that's what we're going to do um, the garage cabinets these things aren't cheap um, anybody that's looked at these things knows what they cost and um, so I kind of bought these a couple at a time when we were in our last house which had a really small garage and um, I think I didn't have this one and that one but uh, so I needed a couple more but looking on marketplace there's a lot of these places that buy like Lowe's pallet sales a little scratch a little dent a return it's already been assembled the box is gone whatever the case may be they sell this stuff for pennies on the dollar and I was able to find multiple of these gladiator cabinets and buy them and put them in the last house when we sold the house, I'm like, that is the one thing I'm not letting go. I will not let my garage cabinets go. So it doesn't matter how much they ask, I'm taking those with me. I brought them. It was one of the first things that I put in here. And um, we have the original top, again, that I told you about. Kind of looks like a butcher block, a really weathered top that goes with everything in here. And so I cut that down and reused it. Uh, this tile is actually made by a company. Uh, the, the name of the tile is called Diesel. It's kind of cool. goes with everything really well. Uh, being a contractor, again, I know how to do tile work, so I laid this in kind of a basket weave pattern and um, do a lot of custom LED in kitchens. So we've got some underlighting LED here. We've got RGB LED on top of the cabinets. Um, obviously, the LED underneath the coffee bar and the LED that surrounds the blueprints. And um, I think we're going to keep moving on from there. I obviously got a great deal on a Red Bull refrigerator. Those things are all overused. I think everybody's seen them. And we've got some furniture pieces that were repurposed. Um, I remember sitting when I was dating my wife on this couch at my father-in-law's house. It was gifted to my brother and sister-in-law. They had it for many years. I sat on it in their house. And at some point, they replaced it. They were going to sell it or get rid of it. And I acquired it back. So that thing has come full circle. And... Um, these tables, cool story on that, kind of the same thing as these shepherd hook lights. They were, uh, they were delivered broken, and that's actually the top, and that's the bottom. I flipped it upside down. The steering wheel was bolted to these three spokes, and the wheel was bent, and the glass sat on top of the wheel rim. And so basically, I took two tables and made one. I flipped it upside down, put the granite top off the second table on this one, took the steering wheel off that was bent, put a clock motor in it, and hung it on the wall. So I've got a couple more pieces of, you know, just kind of cool custom furniture out here. Um, I've got the stairwell down because I guess I'll show you guys this really quick. The ceiling in here from floor to the t bottom of the rafters, uh, or the trusses rather, is 11 foot. From the top of the trusses to the peak of the ceiling is 11 more feet. So we're talking 22 feet here. And as you can imagine, the heat really likes to rise and kind of stay trapped up in the rafters. I had to get something to push all that heat down, so we did these belt drive fans. And that was one thing that I paid full price for. I could have bought two fans, and um, it just wouldn't have been as cool as these. I've seen these other places. It's got a single motor here, and then it's got two leather belts, and this leather belt drives the first one, and the second leather belt goes over and drives the second fan. Uh, let's go ahead and fire these dudes up. Anyway... That helps to draw the heat down and keep the entire space consistent so that the furnace doesn't run as much. I'm gonna go ahead and go up into the attic space now. This being two by four trusses, it can't hold a lot of weight, but what it is perfect for is um, during the winter time when you've gotta get the cushions out of the weather for the outdoor furniture. There's lightweight stuff that I'll bring up here. Car parts, I've got some resin for a project that needs to stay temperature controlled, so I've got it up here and the HVAC system. This was used. I put it in. A good friend of mine gave it to me, and uh, I was able to do this on a budget too, put all this in myself, and it works fantastic. It keeps the space a perfect temperature. The air conditioning works great. Um, I did have to upsize and put a new condenser on it at one point, but uh, I'm totally happy with the way it works. Got the camera system up here. It's a good kind of place, place for the DVR to chill out. But uh, we're going to head back down, show you a couple more things, and kind of wrap up the tour for today. Hold on to this and make sure I'm paying attention to what I'm doing so I don't end up on my back. That's a decent view there. I never Thank get tired. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Please like, tag, share, subscribe. 
and let us know in the comments what you want to see more of, what kind of content you want to see. My uh, plan with this channel is to do a lot of automotive related content. Uh, we hang out, we do rallies, we do all sorts of different things. I've got a lot of car friends. We want to show you some other cars. We want to show you a little bit more about the R8 whenever we get into that a little bit deeper and do some mods, take it out, drive it around. But uh, we've got a lot more coming. So please stay tuned and please comment and let us know what you want to see. And we will be sure and try to make that happen. Thanks a lot.